Welcome back to the Master Class for Extensions at Hair and Compounds. I'm Joanne Morrison with Joe Mohair. So I really like this color blend that we're having. It's, it's like a shadowed ombre, mm -hmm. but we can't obviously leave this haircut on as it is right now because we have the layers and this blonde, because it's one length, they come out in streaks. Once we get a little bit of layering in there, we won't have such a streaky effect. And we'll have more of a subtle blend from her hair into the extension hair. A lot of times with extension hair, you have to have your client stand up. Okay, so I'm gonna have you stand here. And what I'd like to do is get the hair that is behind the ear out of the way. So we don't want to cut into that. Oh, let's show the color in the back, how, how great that looks. Slightly shadowed root into that. That's pretty nice. We did three different shades. Um, I also hand shaded um, some roots on some of the hair. And they now hair and compound cells with that. So lucky you guys, you don't have to do your own coloring if you don't want to. So this is pretty see-through. You don't really need that. Notice how I'm just chipping in and doing more of a point cut as opposed to a blunt cut. Because I want the hair to be a little more tapered and to fall softer. I'm not looking for a hard line on this. A little, little bit more of a slide here to get this angle in. I am just kind of eyeballing it. I can already tell that I'm going to go back in and get a couple right in here to fill that in. And I'm probably going to take that a little bit shorter so we don't have such a, a chunk. But I am also, I'm not like ripping into it like, yeehaw, here we go, you know, because once you cut it, you cut it. So I prefer to take baby steps with this. So Valentina, how do you feel now that you have? doesn't feel like I have a head full. It's not heavy. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to see it because there is no mirror. <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea what she looks like right now. I'm excited. I feel good. I like long hair. Yeah, you may buy shoes or a shirt and drop some big money and love it when you wear it, but you wear your hair every single day. Every single day. And like I say, not all hair needs to be long and dramatic like this. There's a lot of women out there that have thin, fine hair. Now we recently talked with a triathlete who wears hair extensions. What kind of advice would you give someone who has a very active lifestyle but still would like to, um, you know, try out hair extensions? Um, that is a challenge. I'm impressed that she swims and, and does it because chlorine is a real bear on the hair. Um, I would, if I were going to be running and all sorts of elements, I would definitely braid it and keep the hair together while you're going through the wind uh, to prevent tangling. Um, you know, while you're being very active, you're not trying to be glamorous at the same time. You know, that's for when you're done with your workout, done with your day uh, of training, I think. I mean, it would still look good being longer in braids, but you don't, I don't recommend that you do the whole curling iron thing and then do a rough workout. I've had clients that's lasted for a year and a half using the same hair with the cylinder technique. And I think that's fantastic. And it's not because uh, the condition gets bad, it's usually because at that point you've had to trim it, you know, numerous times and it's just getting a bit shorter and, um, you 
know, a year and a half is a long time to go for hair extensions. It's the best run I've had with hair extensions. I've, you know, in the past, before I found hair in compounds, uh, you know, there were people getting new hair like every other time, but there was a big difference in the quality. And I think part of it is that Hair and Compounds has their finger on every single aspect. They own their own factory in India. It, the hair comes here from their factory. It goes through all sorts of uh, testing at this point on for elasticity, uh, for tangles. And Diane goes through every piece by hand. It really is a big difference. It's Remy collected hair. It's not colored with uh, textile dyes. It's full cuticle. All these things make such a difference. Leaves more strength on the hair. Leaves more options. I love the cylinder method uh, because I like, I, I find it to be quick and easy and um, efficient. Uh, wefts are good. Uh, for particular looks. Uh, there are some people that absolutely should have wefts, depending on the hair type. Uh, a lot of my clients have the type of hair that the cylinder suits really well. Um, hair and Compounds does have wefts that you should look into and they can customize the weft hair. Uh, you can get small knots, you can special order the hair that you want. You should definitely check it out. Uh, but for me, I just I just prefer using the um, the cylinder for hair that I leave in the head for a long time. And I have worked with webs and uh, for temporary shoots, photo shoots, I work with webs. You know, with the little combs, not the permanent. So you can see how I'm really taking my time to slide down. I have a client that had, like, if you pulled all her hair into a ponytail, mm -hmm. it's probably about that much hair. I'm not exaggerating what's in between my fingers. And we, and very, very, very fine hair. And she was a client of mine for many, many years up till recently until she ended up buying an RV. And I don't know what national park she's in now. Uh, I was talking to you about her earlier, um, but she had them for about 12 years, and um, we did all sorts of different looks from having more length to taking it shorter and just thickening it up. Um, she, it made a tremendous difference on her and gave her a lot of confidence. She'd still have them now, except that, you know, she's on this different chapter of her life and doesn't need to be tied to her hair when she doesn't know where her and her husband are going to be from one week to the next. Um, their adventures are pretty fun, by the way. But I had another client who uh, was getting over breast cancer, and she lost a lot of hair. And, you know, we did very short pieces on her initially. Uh, she had curly hair, um, and you know we just added little pieces and kind of gave her like a little Joey Heatherton '70s shag um, to kind of fill out, and we adjusted and did different styles until she got about to chin length, and then she let her own grow in. Um, you can't put extensions on all people's hair. When it's super, super short, it would be very hard to do on really straight, baby, fine hair. So, Joan, how did you learn um, to do extensions? I was working at a salon here in LA, and they decided to get into it. Nobody else was doing it. It kind of became my niche. And, um, you know, I went to other companies, and that's where I was getting the hair from, and I just, I wasn't satisfied. Um, I knew it didn't look the way I wanted it to, and not really understanding about the hair quality situation. Um, I, then I went to take 
a extensive work uh, shop with a woman named Kiara Bailey. And that's when it really opened up. I mean, she showed us how to make our own extensions by hand, which I can do. You get bulk hair, you can take like five or six different colors, put them in the placard, get the glue, trim them down. I learned all sorts of stuff from that class. It was really wonderful. Um, and that's where actually I met Isaac from Heron Compounds, the, one of the owners of Heron Compounds. And it kind of went on from there. I got a lot of information actually from Isaac and Elizabeth as time went on. Um, and that was, gosh, about 12, 13 years ago. Um, and then I'm just kind of a hair dork. I really am. Um, you know, I kind of snoop around on YouTube and look at other things that people are doing. I have done extensions on uh, a couple of actresses and you're actually under confident confidential confidentiality contracts. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to know. You know, uh, you know what? There's a lot of beautiful people out there, but a lot of them are really beautiful because they have some help. <laughs> and, um, you know, some don't, but some do, you know, a fair amount do, but I can't really talk about that. Um, but, but just more so, like, what is it like navigating that industry as a stylist? Um, it's tricky. Uh, you, you're dealing with a lot of ego, um, but then you're also dealing with money's not an option for some of these people. So it's kind of uh, uh, a little bit of a balancing act. And people are people. Some are great and easy, and some are, you know, a little more sensitive and trickier to deal with. Um, I have not done any work on sets. I'm not a production hairdresser uh, by any means. That's a whole other baby. And in production sets, they work with wigs and pieces all the time. Um, but that's more for the shooting of the show or the film. But can I tell you, if I could do hair on any show, hands down, would be Game of Thrones. If I had my choice, those wigs are insane to me. Those braids are amazing. Just love them. For those of you who are joining us um, through the live feed, please feel free to leave any questions in the comment section if you have them. So Joanne, what about um, someone who is just now getting into the industry? Um, you know, do you have any advice? Yes, train, 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 train. I don't care how naturally gifted you are. It takes years to really get it down. Get your education. Um, there's, you know, so much to learn. There's so many different things, uh, different muscles to work at, different things to get good at. You're not going to have it all right away. Um, get a mentor. Get somebody who really, really cares about what they do and learn from them. And that means, you know, time on your, on your part to take the time to maybe shampoo some hair and not do the glamorous stuff. But, you know, I trained for over uh, two and a half years when I started out as a young person. And thank God I did. And what that gives you is the advantage, the years somebody else has put into their industry to learn. You get, you know, it, it takes years. And if you, you can't expect to be as smart as a PhD if you've never even gone to community college. You've got to get your training in. You've got to make that extra effort of understanding the business around you. Also, you know, there's many specialties. For some people, they want to do it all. I want to do it all. But there's other people that understand, like, you know, I really just want to do photo shoots and fashion shows. So with something like that, you have to kind of think, all right, where could, where could that work for me? And that, the number one place would be New York City. Do you have any advice for, you know, how to stand out from the competition and how to be unique among, you know, a lot of people that are emerging in this industry? Again, education is the foundation of that. It really is. It's the foundation. There's lots of venues right now, too. There's YouTube channels. There's Instagram. I mean, none of this stuff was available when I was coming up. You kind of had to get with a big salon. Uh, with a big name to, you know, you couldn't even take your own pictures. You had to have a professional photographer. You had, you know, it was crazy. There's a lot of options now. And my advice too would be to any hairdresser, 
that wants to show off their work on your Instagram account, don't do a thousand selfies of yourself. Really, just, sure, have a picture of yourself, but make it about your hair. Show, show your work, show your clients. Um, you know, do some shoots that are nice photo shoots. Do some simple before and afters. Show your range. Um, but don't make your Instagram account all about, you know, looking cute yourself. I think that's one of the biggest uh, things that says you might not be into your client as much as you should be. That's my personal opinion. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but there's, it should focus a little bit more, I think, on the hair. Get your education. Figure out what you want to do. Do you want to do color and chemical work where you just do texture treatments and color all day? Then you want to get into a salon that specializes, has teams that specialize. There's plenty of salons out there that specialize. Uh, do you want to do all of it? Do you want to do your own cut? Do you want to do your own color? You got to look for that type of salon. Um, if you want to do photo shoots, you got to go talk to an agency. You got to take some preliminary pictures. You're going to have to go out and work for free with photographers to build your book. Um, you know, do you want to do film and television? And uh, if you want to do production work, film and television hair, then you better go look up local uh, 736 or 709, find the uh, what the hairdressers union is in the city that you live in, because they're all different. I believe Chicago and New York just combined, and it might be the same one. Go to their website, find out what their um, uh, rules are to get in. Um, start investigating every little avenue that you can. And the other bit of advice that I have is don't give yourself away. That's a big thing. Don't give yourself away. Don't be doing all of your friends and family's hair for free all the time. You know, when you do somebody for free, make sure that you've got a model situation and somebody understands exactly what they're getting, what advantage they're getting by getting free hair. And then you, as the hairdresser, need to get what you need out of it. Photographs. Stop to promote yourself. A lot of stylists uh, that, that we work with are out of state. They're not actually able to come here to our supply house in Los Angeles. How would you um, describe to them the experience of looking through the hair and, and, and finding what you... I love it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel lucky to be here because what I like about this place is it really is about the hair. There's, there's some hair shops in Los Angeles that have like fancy lighting and you know nice chairs with the lounge area and all they're doing is you know selling hair uh, so it's a very glossy experience and when I come here it's really just about the hair you see the different you see the hackles which they take the shorter hair out of the bundle of hair the hair that's not long enough to be in that bundle there's shelves that are you know floored almost ceiling different types of extensions. There's uh, examples of different um, hair extension colors and um, blends, uh, like the ombre ones. It's, it's pretty cool and, you know, I've been coming here many years, so I've seen the changes over time. I'm gonna have you sit down, though. Hello. <laughs> Are you all not good? <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's just a, it's a real experience for a total hair like me. <laughs> so for those East Coast viewers that are watching this, could you describe <clears throat> what that feels like to people who might not be able to actually touch and feel the extension? Well, when we just got it, it feels extremely, extremely soft. Like I know people sell real hair and they always talk about it, but there's something between hearing that it's real hair and actually touching it. Like comparing my hair to this, I don't feel much of a difference. Which is, I think, the main goal. That it's almost as fine as your own hair. Right, and I do have fine hair, unfortunately. I wish it was 
not so fine. So this fits perfectly. I don't know if it's just this particular extension that's like that, so we matched it, or in general, but it feels really, really healthy and really soft. I can't get over the softness. So what I'm doing here is I'm clipping her own hair out of the way. I'm not doing a blunt cut. I'm not lifting it all up and cutting blunt layers. I am sliding it down to create shorter pieces into the longer pieces. I just wanted to go with longer. I didn't want to go with tremendously layered because I use her in a lot of photo shoots. You can actually see her on my Instagram, which is Jomo Hair. Um, we've done wigs on her, we've done braids, we've done all sorts of, of different colors and so on, but we've never um, had long hair on her. So I didn't want to make it too layered. Uh, because I don't want it to interfere with being able to put it into particular styles, which you'll also see um, as we start doing those photographs. So you may be saying to yourself, well, if you don't want to layer it, why are you layering, layering it right now? And that's because I want to blend it from what she's got into the bottom. Because if I just left it hanging, it's going to be obvious that it goes from layered hair into one length hair. So we gotta layer it a bit to have movement and to have flow and to make it look more natural. You don't want people to know. So that's why I'm sliding through, and very gently. Um, so what the advantage of these extensions is that when we curl that hair, it's gonna hold. Uh, much more than her own hair will. And that will coordinate well with what's trending now with the big barrel curl, the kind of beach wave look will work nice with that where she doesn't get a lot of fullness at her roots, but she has more of it breakthrough down towards the ends. It leaves her a few more styling options and it lets her own hair get a little healthier too um, because this sandy blonde color she's gonna have coming through now is has been done on the extensions and it's not being done on her hair any longer when you cut individual pieces like what i'm doing it's very easy to kind of get lost because you, you're not cutting into a prior guide because what i'm doing is taking the hair sliding down scooping out um, so every so often uh, like when i'm done with this row i want to go through and make sure we don't have anything long and hanging really out of the way. So this one is right here. I just picked, oh, it's because it's in the row beneath. So you want to go through and make sure that you're not way off because, you know, it's a whole different technique of cutting extension hair. Uh, but again, if, if, if it's done poorly, you will spot the extensions. So, and you can see also here, this is a good example. This is her own hair. I let, uh, because I put the extension on top of her hair, her own hair drops out. And so when I lift from the top, I know that's the extension. Do you see what I'm talking about there, Stop. Does that convey on the camera? Yeah. So that's her own. And then just pulling through here. Because you don't want to slice through their own hair. <laughs> don't cut the customer's own hair, please. Um, yeah, so just trying to keep it in shape. You don't want to end up with one side a lot longer than the other. I think the haircuts get passed over a little bit with hair extensions. Remember, uh, point cuts, slide cuts, good shears, Everything uh, I, I've said today through all three segments, you can't go cheap on anything. If you're gonna buy shears, you've gotta buy a good pair of shears. You can't buy a $100 pair of shears and expect to get the same result out of it. Um, good equipment is paramount. Good hair is paramount. So uh, we're coming to a close on our time and I just wanna let uh, all the viewers know that there will be before and after pictures uh, available on our Instagram page. Thank you everybody for tuning in.
Great job, Julian. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. YouTube family, thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed our video today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this and the latest updates in the hair extensions industry. We'd also love to hear what you learned from the video today. Uh, please leave your comments below and we'll see you soon.